The little girl then talked, started crying, and she said, I'm the oldest of seven children that were part of the foster care system. Two of us did not find families. The rest of my siblings did. She said, as a result, I was put in foster care and became a teenage mom at 16. My vision is to open a home for people like me. She said, I even went to social services. She said, but because of my age, they laughed at me. So my daughter started crying, and she said, you're not going to believe this. I just toured the property. And Alexis toured the property last Friday. Um, it will hold 40 apartments. And what she wants to do now is not just for children, but for single moms that are in domestic violence situations or foster care kids that are getting ready to age out. Um, I'm so proud of her. Um, she has set this up. It is called Kelly's Children's Home. It's going to be, it's, she's already started her Facebook page. If her offer on this property is accepted, there was one other, she'll have 30 to 60 days to come up with $150,000 to sponsor this. She has already had one gentleman from Charlotte reached out to her yesterday. He's a businessman. He has businesses in Greenville, businesses in Charlotte, and he wants to start donating a portion of his profits to this. Um, so all I ask is that you pray and that this will come to fruition. Um, and I really feel like Team Bethany is going to be with us along the way. Yes. Um, her story is there. It intermeshes with Christmas. And um, one final note, what set my daughter on this journey for domestic violence is her mama is a survivor 22 years later. So through our struggles, this is where she has brought it. And I'm very proud of her. So thank you, Charlie. <laughs>
Alright, alright. Valentine's Day, a Valentine from God, Valentine's Day 2020. This has five important truths, but actually the Lord gave me a sixth one, but I thought I'd leave it at five and see if I'll pick it up. <laughs> Amen. I want you to think about something. Look at this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And of course somebody took that and spelled Valentine out of it. I remember years ago, uh, years, years, years ago, we had Valentine's Day on a, on a Tuesday night. So I grabbed a big old cake and put uh, John 3.16, God's Valentine to us. So, so again, uh, for God so loved the world. Now, just in case you have forgotten these important truths I'm getting ready to tell you. Or just in case you've never heard these important truths, I want to share them with you today. You might think I've lost my mind. That's okay. Some people think that. Some people know that. It don't matter. Okay. But it is so nice. You know, how, how many got a Valentine card? I got little Valentine hearts all over the place, all over the house. I, I got up in their little wall, and the Valentines were everywhere, and it was really awesome. And, and, and uh, uh, of course, when we went out, I went out for lunch, I had my badge on from Fit Detention Center, and everybody, I didn't realize I had my badge on to start with. I stopped in the Dollar Tree, and certain people run at me and said, how you doing, sir? I'm glad to meet you. Aren't you having a good time? I'm thinking, why are they talking to me like that? And others ran from me. <laughs> and then I realized I had it on. I said, when I get in the car, I got to take it off. Well, I got in the car, I didn't take it off. So we go to the restaurant, and the waiter just keeps kind of hiding around the corner. He keeps waiting on me, and I'm backing away, waiting on me, backing away. And so then when they come, we ordered the same dish. Then I ordered the same dish. And he sent them back and said, wait a minute, I mixed them up. <laughs> and Linda said, you need to give me that. <laughs> so we switched them out. The next morning, she was sick in her stomach. I said, see, you switched it one time too many. Let me ask a question. How many got a Valentine's card? One way or the other, whether it was verbal or whether it was physical. You know, Valentine's cards, they're, they're nice. They're nice to get. I like them. They say some good things. But no matter how you look at it, still a Valentine's at times can seem generic. Doesn't it? I mean, you got a cup saying, world's best dad. How many people got that besides you? World's greatest husband. How many people got that besides you? Amen. I was going to get Linda a shirt that says, I don't need Google. My husband knows everything. <laughs> <laughs> Amen. No matter, they can still have a generic sound to them. And if we're not careful, they'll, they'll lose that specialness because you kind of think, well, they saw that in the Hallmark store. And yes, it speaks out. But, you know, let me tell you something. There's one in here today who thinks you are so special. He thinks you're so special. He literally gave his son to die for you. That's how special you are. And when you think about God, think about this. Always think about this. He's omnipotent. He's omnipresent. He's omniscient. I was talking in the mass talk uh, in a training session last weekend. And I, and I told him, I said, you remember now God's omnipresent, meaning that, that he's not just in, in your here and goes back to your present, past and goes up to your future. He's in your past, your present, your future at the same time. All at the same time. That's how he can arrange events to make them work out to his good and to your good. And so one guy, he was struggling with his talk that he's got to do. He says, you tell me God's already wrote my talk. I said, no, God's already seen your talk. And if you ain't got it, it's because he don't like what you got so far. How encouraging. <laughs> All right. So when God sends us a Valentine's, it's not generic. It's powerful. It's life-giving. And I can tell, how, how many here, you know, again, I, I really wanted to speak on trials, and, and I still struggled while I was up there about speaking on trials, but again, the Lord really pushed this hard yesterday, and I worked on it, and so uh, I got both sermons sitting here, because I was going to preach on trials, and yesterday the Lord... The Lord did this, and so I got this one. So, so let me ask you a question. Now, again, without, without even thinking about it, how many's had some pretty rough days in the past, some pretty rough weeks, where, where you just sometimes didn't feel so special? Amen? Amen. That's right. Things are going, things might not be going the way you want it, the way you expect it. 
And, and you kind of start feeling, get kind of down on yourself. Have you ever gotten this way and start feeling down on yourself? And feeling like, wow, I must not be doing good. God's not really blessing me like he used to. Am I doing something wrong? Or is there something wrong in my life? Or, or, or what's going on? Well, here's your Valentine card. So I hope this changes your attitude when we get through. So let's first go to this. Number one card. Keep calm and remember. God made you awesome. One more time, I gotta read that out because I'm y'all gonna catch this a minute in a minute, but let's get through the cards. Keep calm and remember God made you awesome. You are awesome. Look at somebody and say you're awesome with you, and no one not tell it. Okay? Your awesomeness is not related to what you do. Your awesomeness is not related to what you achieve. Your awesomeness is not related to what you own, but it is about your inherent, unique self. There is only one of you. Somebody say, thank God. Thank God. Don't point, just say, thank God. There's only one of you, and because there's only one of you, you are awesome. Be kind of shared it about your heart. You said, what you told about your heart, after he had, he had a stint put in this week, and the way he feels better afterwards said that he had no pain afterwards, but he sure feels a whole lot better because somebody went inside, didn't open him up, went inside when you can't even see and fixed a problem, a blockage in his heart. Isn't it cool when God goes inside of us without us even knowing it and does something great like that, fixes blockages in our life? And he does it because we are awesome because we serve the one who is awesome. Amen. So let me give you a scripture here. Y'all are going to catch on in a minute. Ready? Psalm 139. I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works, and that my soul knoweth right well. Psalm 139, 30, 13 through 14, or 27, uh, 14 now goes, For thou hast possessed my reins, thou hast covered me in my mother's womb. Again, look at somebody and tell me you're awesome. Now look at yourself, pick your finger and say, I'm awesome. I'm awesome. It's not a what I do, it's not a what I say, it's because I'm His. He's awesome, I'm awesome. Amen? Amen. Y'all are kind of catching on. I was so excited, I was excited. As a matter of fact, I got accused of sleeping while one guy was talking. I wasn't sleeping, I got excited, I was writing down. He saw my head down, as I was writing down, I was trying to be inconspicuous. And, and right there, and I'm just his spiritual director, and he goes, wake up, David! Call me right out. And I said, okay. I don't know what to say. All right. Number two. God does not call those who are equipped. He equips those in whom he has called. That's a nice Valentine. Isn't it? God does not call those who are equipped. He equips those whom he has called. So here it goes again. You were born with everything you need to rock this life. Here it goes. Valentine's. This is cool Valentine's saying. You are born with everything you need to rock this life to get it going. Amen? Watch this. You have all this inside of you, all the talent that you need, all the uniqueness that you need, <clears throat> all the personal power that you need is all in you. You just have to learn how to tap into it. And when you serve God with gladness and learn his word and learn what he's doing in your life, then you can tap into it. And listen, listen, once you tap into it, it's amazing. Because again, I love it. Psalm 139, 13, 18, it says, you, were, you created my innermost being. You knit me together in my mother's womb. Which means I weren't thrown together. God knit me. He knit you. We're not thrown together. In order to knit, you've got to have the proper equipment. You've got to have a plan. You've got to have a, a, a procedure. You've got to know what you're doing. You've got to have, a, have, a, have some, uh, something in mind, an outcome. So, so, I'll praise you because I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. My frame was not hidden from you when I was made in the secret place, when I was woven together in the depths of the earth. Wow. Wow. When nobody else could see you. When mama hadn't even felt the kick yet. When mama didn't even know that you were even in there. God had you. God done something. God equips you for everything you need to do what he's called you to do. Look at somebody and say, you got it. Tell somebody else, quit fretting. You got it. 
That's right. Praise God. You got it. You know, yesterday is the body army that says, don't try to be somebody else. Quit trying to be somebody else. Be yourself. And, and I was to challenge the team yesterday, so I got up, I told them about, uh, I read that mighty army to them, and I read about we're all, we're all part of the body, but although we're a part of the one body, we're many members, and that, that we all have a specific task, we all have special things to do, and I remember when I was coaching basketball, we had a winning season, as a matter of fact, uh, we won every game that year, and we had, I can't remember how many guys we had. We had like maybe 10 guys, I'm not sure. But, but I made sure that every guy got a chance to start. And I made sure that every guy got playing time. Some guys on other teams never got off the bench. I gave all my guys playing time. But I learned something from John Wooden. Y'all remember John Wooden? The winningest basketball coach won 88 straight games. 88 straight games. Seven national titles. <coughs> Coach K has not got what Coach Wooden has got. And Coach K is awesome. But he doesn't have all the trophies that Wooden's got. And Wooden, he, he actually, he said what he would do is when people come to play with him, he would put, he'd find out what they were good at, he would put them where they were good. In other words, if you're good at one thing, I'm not going to put you somewhere else, I'll put you here. And so I'd get the guys out there playing, I'd do the same thing, I'd see what they were good at. Well, D.C. was my forward, my power forward. So D.C. could take that ball and, and just rock that thing under the net and, and rock it and get me rebounds. And this other guy, he was a little bit bigger than D.C. And although he was good, his best thing was standing under the net getting rebounds. He was awesome getting rebounds. His name was Brandon. And his daddy was the assistant coach. Well, I told everybody I didn't believe in just benching somebody. I used to bench for discipline. And I told Brandon, I said, Brandon, all I need you to do is I need you under the goal. You're our offensive rebound man. I need you to get the offensive rebounds and the defensive rebounds. I need you to rebound it. And it was an offensive rebound, I need you to either pass it or, or lay it up. So he said, okay, coach. And some people got talking to him and got all in his head and said, how can you stay in one spot all the time? You can play better than that. Why aren't you all over the place? And he comes to me and goes, why am I here? I said, you're here because you're the best one there of anybody we got. He said, well, DC, you don't have to sit there. I said, DC's moving around. I got DC doing what he's supposed to do. And these two guys stayed in the game just about the whole time. The other guys were going, going in and out. And, and so he got cocky. I think DC might remember this. One night he got cocky, and he just started shooting. He took everybody's position. And he went over here and he shot. He took DC's position and he shot. Next time the ball come up, he took another fourth position and he shot. Then he just come on back here and he just was taking everybody's, the guards. He was taking all the guard shots. And he made like, I don't know, 10, 15, 10, 14, 10, 14 points. And he's doing like this. And he's doing like this. And I look over at his daddy. I'm going. And look over at his daddy. His daddy says, okay, do what you got to do. And so Brandon's doing like this. And I said, come here. He says, watch the coach. The coach made 14 points. I said, sit on the bench. He said, you just saw me make 14 points. I said, no, I saw you four, or, or, or uh, seven times do what I told you not to do. But I made 14 points, and you're going to sit on the bench. He said, but coach, I said, we got guys that can make those shots, but those guys can't rebound. You can. So you just sit right there until you understand that's your job. Not to be everybody else, but to be you. <laughs> you think there might be somebody here benched because you're trying to be somebody else? Ouch. Hello. And so, he sat there for 10 minutes. I watched him. He patted his foot. He did this. He's going, I need to get in there. And so finally, when he got through, with his little fit, I looked over at him and said, Randy, where do you play? He said, I said, I'm the center. I said, okay, center, where do you play? He said, under the net and in the paint. I said, where else do you play? He said, under the net and in the paint. I said, do you go around the perimeter, take shots, and I'll sit in the paint, and i get rebounds, and i shoot from there. I said, you, can you remember that? He says, coach, I'll never forget it again. DC smiled, he remembers that. Because DC was all over the place. He had to be right there. 
And so I said, that's what DC is for. He's the one running around. You need to be right there. You know, we never lost another game that year, and still very always won the next three or four years. We were winning. But one thing I keep remembering, because God told me there's times when God sets me on the bench because I'm busy trying to play other positions that I don't need to play. <laughs> that was a freebie, okay? Here you go. You're bored with everything you need to do what God's called you to do. No matter how bad it seems, you are born with everything you need to rock this world. Are you ready? Look at that. God holds the whole world in his hand. He holds you in his hand. And in your hand is untapped potential. So watch this. There's another Valentine card. You are destined to live your highest potential. Not a get by Christian. I've seen so many guys who get by Christians. Get by Christians. You know, somebody said, why do you always try to get so deep? Why don't you just, you know, preach some white stuff? Well, this is about as light as it gets. I said, well, if I preach, I said, sermon is produce Christian is. We need something that's going to feed somebody so that they can go out and feed somebody and they can grow. So look, you're destined to live your highest potential. Yes, there's people around you trying to stop you. Yes, there's people around you talking about you. Yes, there's people who say, even Christians say, who do they think you are? It's okay. Because God has an end result for you. And God's got this. Amen? God's going to guide you. And let me just tell you this now. There's going to be mountains that you have to climb. There's going to be challenges that will be the making of you. Let me say that. When you have to climb a mountain, just remember, Climbing that mountain is where you're made. If you can climb that mountain and keep a good attitude and just keep on climbing, it's amazing that that challenge did not destroy you, but it made something of you and in you. You know, too many times we're so busy focusing on what we lost that we can't see what we kept and we cannot see what we gained. We're so busy looking at our failures, we're so busy looking back at what we lost that we can't see right now what we still have and what's coming ahead. Because God is going to do something with you through your challenge. And when you need it, God's going to send you help in hand. So, again, Psalm 139, I just love that psalm. This whole psalm has been, has been so cool. Look, like an open book, I love this. Good God, I love this. Like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I even lived one day. Somebody needs to say, wow. That's amazing. Let me read it again. Like an open book, you watch me grow from conception to birth. There's no doctor that was able to watch you from conception to birth. Mom couldn't feel you from conception to birth. But God saw you. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared, even I, even before I'd even lived one day. You don't have to raise your hands, but how many in here in the last few days, the last week, the last month, have said, I'm not good enough? How many have said, I don't know enough? I can't do this. I don't have what it takes. How many has had somebody come up to you and say, you don't have what it takes. You're not enough. When you see yourself through God's eyes, through God's eyes, not on your own eyes, not on your own merit, when you see yourself through God's eyes, you are enough. 
if God's calling you to do something like that house, guess what? Sheep were enough. Amen? That house is something that's been needed for so, 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 so long. And I believe God's going God's to take care of that in a way like you wouldn't believe because that's going to be a major, major ministry ground. It's going to be a major help to a lot of people. No matter what you currently believe or think, no matter what anybody else says, you are enough. You are good enough because you're a child of God. And because I'm a child of God, I am complete. Wow. If he saw all the stages of my life, that means that he omnipresence in my past, in my present, and in my future all at the same time. If he sees all of that, wow. It is so amazing. Matter of fact, when I think about, you know, there's a lot of things I would like to see things change. There's a lot of things I like to see God do something different in my life. I, I, I would not, I, if I could have my choice, I wouldn't have been colorblind. Yeah, if I, there's a lot of things, if I'd have had my choice, you know, I, uh, uh, I wouldn't have had, or some things I would have had, you know, if I'd have had my choice. But it's not necessarily what I have a choice in, it's what God gave. And when he gave me what I needed to get done, I'm not missing one single thing. You're not missing one single thing to get what God's got to get done in your life. You are enough because he is more than enough. I could stop right here and go no further. And I believe if we could put that in our minds, if we could say that to ourselves every day. No matter what you currently believe, I'm going to read it one more time. I, just, just, I want y'all to close your eyes and I'll read it. I want you to say this to yourself. Think about yourself. And think of all the people want to say about you. Close your eyes. Raise your hands. No matter what you currently believe or think or what anybody else says, you are enough. Y'all say enough. Enough. Yeah. You are good enough, say I'm good enough. You are a child of God, say I'm a child of God. You are complete, say I'm complete. You're not missing one single thing, say I'm not missing one single thing. You are enough because he's more than enough. Y'all say he's more than enough. Wow, that's a good Valentine's card. You open your eyes now. I have strength, Philippians 4.13. I have strength for all things in Christ who empowers me. I am ready for anything. I am equal to anything through him who infuses inner strength into me. I am self-sufficient in Christ's sufficient. And say I'm self-sufficient. I'm self-sufficient in Christ's sufficiency. In other words, he gives me all I need. You know, of course, there's one of my favorite, favorite scriptures to look at. I love this. Y'all read that out loud. Y'all read that again. Y'all sounding good. <clears throat> wow. Jeremiah 29, 11. If I know the thoughts I think toward you, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. Let's, let's just go a little further here. I love this, the message. I know what I'm doing. I have it all planned out. Plans to take care of you, not abandon you. Plans to give you the future. That you hoped for. Wow. Look at somebody and say, this is not my end. Tell somebody this is not my end. This is not my end. It's just a speed bump. Just a speed bump. I'm getting ready. I'm getting ready. To pick up steam. Pick up steam. And move forward. Move on. God's got this. God's got this. Amen. Amen. And then finally. We love him because he first loved us. You're loved. That's number six. You're loved. Yeah. That's right. You're loved. Tell somebody you're loved. You're loved. Yeah. Look at this. God has so much love for you, even if you don't always see the evidence of it. He still loves you. Even if other people around you don't show it, God still loves you. God loves you so much. 
God wants you here. He needs you here. You are cherished. You feel a very important part of this life. God loves you. God loves you. It seems like when I go to Pitt Detention Center, I hear it all the time, y'all guys that go, I know y'all hear it too, that how can God love me? Look what I've done. Or if God loved me, why is he not doing for me what he's done to the guy next to me? The guy didn't get any time, he got probation. I, I just heard this just last week. Guys with worse crimes than myself, they got probation, and here I am, I got three years. I don't understand it. And I told him, I said, you know what, I don't understand it either, but there's one thing I do understand, God knows. And I said, maybe you're not through training yet in what you need to train. Or maybe you're the person to talk to some other guys that are in that prison. And other guys don't have what it takes to do what you can do. So instead of looking at it as you're being punished, look at it as a challenge. And that God is maneuvering you in a greater ministry. You just hang in there. Guys, y'all come on up here. Get ready to play something. And then finally... God thinks about you more often than you know, with more love than you realize. How precious are your thoughts about me, oh God. They outnumber the grains of sand. Wow. Psalm 139, I think it says. God's got you. Please want to say God's got you. God's got a plan. God's got you. Everybody stand up. I was with, I don't know, 25 guys yesterday, training for Omega's team. And there was other people coming in and out from that church, bringing food and stuff for us to have lunch. And all the way there, and all the way back when I stopped, I noticed something very strongly.
didn't really work. And so the father said, I got a better idea. And so he got out a piece of metal. And started punching out letters. His son not only was able to read, his son was able to excel. And millions upon millions of people have excelled because Lewis Braille decided not to take that tragedy and be consumed by it and lay down and do nothing but bother. Instead, he got up and did something and the same awe that blinded his son is the same awe he used to do the first Braille life. seen about life is we all have problems. It's how you handle them. It's how you attack them. Do you let them attack you or do you attack them? Do you lay down or do you get up and do something? Because every problem, every problem that has a solution and magnifies God and will show His power and His glory. I had a guy tell me in B5 he said, you know what? He said, I really didn't want to be locked up. He said, one day I just finished a hit. I got in my car. And I said, God, I really need help. I really need you to help me out of this. I cannot break this on my own. He said, he was praying right down the road. He said, he even stopped. But he had even stopped at a stop by or something. He put his head down and prayed again. He said, God, you got to help me. I need your help desperately. And he said he looked up and blue lights were behind him. He said, God, I need your help, not police. He said, I wound up to be five. And he said, I have discovered that when I asked for God, asked God for help, God didn't send it in the same package I was expecting. Once I opened the package, it was more than enough. More than enough. And now I thank God for those blue lights behind me. Because God did something great because of that. He said, I'm a free man now. And I love God. Today you may be going through things that honestly you never thought you'd have to go through. You never thought you'd have to see. And that's why it's important today that you remember that God is not punishing you. God is not trying just to take your fingers off the rung of the ladder or beat you. It's just what God thinks about you. He thinks you're awesome. He knows He's given you everything you need to rock this life and to get through what you're going through right now. <laughs> he believes you're destined to live your highest potential, even if you don't see it right now. He believes that you're enough because you trust Him who's more than enough. And finally, He loves you. And one more story. I just feel led that I need to tell the story. I, I worked with a guy that found me. He was a supervisor and he worked beneath me. I was upstairs in engineering. He worked beneath me. Big man, come to me one day just to cry. And I said, man, what is wrong with you? He said, he couldn't stop crying. I said, talk to me. If something happened out here, he said, no, 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 no. He said, my pregnant wife just came back from the doctor and said that the doctor told her that our baby's brain is not developing. And we were better off just to abort the baby. And he says, I believe God can do something. I just don't see it right now. So I went 
upstairs and I made him this little poster and put right on his desk a faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted and then I put Genesis with Isaac and Abraham and he offered him up a faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted that's going to be part of next week but I just need it right here right now and every day when I saw him I would tell him faith that has not been tested cannot be trusted he said amen and I remember a couple of months later him coming to me he wasn't crying this time he was about that floating about that off the ground and I said what's up man he said, my wife has come back from the doctor and said the baby's brain has developed fully. I'm so glad I didn't abort it. And then I remember when that little baby was born, and I picked it up in my hands, and I looked at his daddy and I said, see, your faith was tested, but can it be trusted? I saw that boy just a few weeks ago. God's got you. Never put your head down. Never put your head down. Close your eyes. I'm going to go through this one more time and then I'm going to ask you something. Pray for me, Pastor. I, I'm really having a hard time 
I don't even have enough. And then finally, your love. I think that's the hardest one of all. Your love.
you can actually carry on a conversation. Take your paper right down and hold them with you. Or somebody's talking to you, you can go out and so say, that, that's right, that's what they're doing, that's what they're doing. Yes, that's how they're taking care of this. So you got good stuff there, plus you got stuff on how to take care of yourself. So it's really, really awesome. Very, very awesome. And it is so great to see Wyatt and his family. I'm so glad you didn't have, didn't have to go overseas. That's awesome. And I'm proud of you that you were willing to do whatever it took. That's awesome, too. <laughs> Guys, I think we can save for time. And keep our family safe. Isn't that cool? Amen. And his whole family, because they all, uh, military families is not just one, it's everybody. That's right. Everybody is in that, in that group. It's all of them. They all have to pay the price. Amen. Brother Steve, will you dismiss us in prayer, please? You're looking, by the way, you are looking good. I know you can't help <laughs> Father God, we just praise you and love you, Lord. And Lord, we just thank you for being, for setting our life out before us before we were ever conceived, Lord. Lord, we thank you for knowing us that well. And with, Lord, we pray that you just touch your heart. Bless us mightily as we know you will. And God, us through this life. And Lord, when we fall, Lord, we just pray that you just open up our eyes and let us know. You've got it. All we have to do is believe. And Lord, we give you the honor and the glory and the praise for it all right now. In Jesus' precious and holy name, amen.